Hey Creative Suite TV watchers, it's Mike. Well, as you can see, I'm on the road this episode and we're in lovely Brisbane. It's a little bit hot and sweaty here and we're on the CS4 Roadshow and it's going really well. We're just having a lunch break so there's no one here. There's been a few more people than what are in the room at the moment. You should be excited because this week we're looking at Photoshop CS4 and the new way that it renders to the screen. We've got this fantastic zoom and pan options. We can rotate the canvas. We're going to use this image of Adobe headquarters that I have on screen here for our image today. Hope you liked it. this episode. It's going to save you a bunch of time in your workflow. Get into it. Sweet TV. Photoshop CS4 Extended. Queensland, Queensland, what an idiot. I can't even say Queensland. But who cares? Because I've got some exciting Photoshop techniques to show you. This is all about the way that Photoshop now uses a GPU on our computers to render to the screen. And there's a few other little tips and tricks in here as well. First thing is that I really must point out to you is the image that we're working on is a, a, a photograph of Adobe headquarters in San Jose. And I'm going to zoom in here. This is a 442 megapixel uh, image. Okay. At the moment, we're zoomed out at 3.92%. It is a monstrous file. And we can even have a look at the image size. Let's zoom in on that as well so you can see 29,000 pixels across that is truly extraordinary. It's monstrous. This is on my laptop. I'm using a MacBook Pro uh, laptop. Okay, so we can zoom into this thing now and you'll notice as soon as I uh, control space bar, Apple space bar, click and hold my mouse in, the nice way that Photoshop zooms. And if I hold the Alt key, I can zoom in and out so smoothly. It really is quite nice. Now, once you get into a certain percentage now, and we can see a brand new pixel grid. So that's a new viewing thing in Photoshop CS4 as well. So we can actually highlight and work pixel for pixel if we like, and we can zoom in and out that way. Let's zoom out just a, a little bit more. Now, when we're seeing the entire image or when we're seeing part of the image like this, and we'd like to pan around, the shortcut for the uh, hand tool, of course, is either the H key or the space bar. So with the space bar, I can click and flick my image around and it drifts across. So you can just flick and flick. And if you want to stop, then you just click again. So flick and then click and it stops. Flick and then click and then it stops. So it's really quite a neat way uh, of working as well. Let's drift back over to this logo. Okay. The other thing that's brand new is spring loaded tools. So you may not know, but each of the tools has got a, a shortcut assigned to it. The type tool, for example, is the T key. Okay. The hand tool, for example, is the H key. So if I'm in the move tool or the V key and I want to temporarily switch to the text tool, I hold in the T key. And then I, when I release it, it will take me back to the move tool. So T release or H release. And then that switches me between the tools very quickly. Now this is important. If I want to zoom out really quickly, I can hold in the H key and then click and hold in my mouse. And you'll notice around my cursor, a square appear. Okay. So the square indicates the zoom that I just was at. I can then reposition my cursor and then let go of that and that will zoom me into that new location. And that's click, move the cursor, let's have a look at this bus and then release it and then it will zoom into that area. So it becomes really fast to zoom in and out. We can check to see who's at work. Is my boss there? No, he's not. We can click in and out of all of these spots very, very quickly. So it makes the process of retouching fast, fast, fast. And that's what Photoshop CS4 is all about. So in the world of retouching, if you've got to come around and, and do a few little spots, you might do it like this. You might get the 
spot healing brush tool, a spot healing brush tool over here. You would then click an area. We'll change the size of the brush. We'll then click an area. So click and then hold the H key, zip, move the cursor, find somewhere else that needs to be retouched. Click, 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 move your hand. And then that way you can zip around retouching things out really, really quickly and then move the cursor and then there you go. Okay, just on the brush. Okay, the brush really quickly. If you want to resize um, a brush, okay, just on the brush tool here, and you can use the square brackets. Here's a new thing. If you hold down the control and the alt key or the option key, you can click and drag now out the size of your brush. I say so click and drag to the right, click and drag to the left with the alt and control key. So that's a new kind of little technique there as well. Okay. One last thing, because because obviously this picture is uh, San Jose, I thought we might go back over to the Adobe Bridge and pick some images that I took in Perth. Okay, Perth is a lovely spot. This is right next to the Swan River. As a matter of fact, this building is called the Swan Bells. Now, I have one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to go from the bridge and say Photoshop use the photo merge. So if you have used photo merge in the past and you've thought, mm, it's rubbish. Well, think again, have another look. We've got a few new options. We've got vignette removal. We've got geometric distortion correction. So with two brand new options there, all we have to do is select the open files here and press OK and then let Photoshop run its magic. It'll open up all of those images one at a time. Of course, they're DNG files taken with my Nikon D70. It's loading them up into the layers panel, which you may see over on the uh, lower uh, right hand uh, portion of the screen. So you can see it's loading them up into uh, layers down there. Let's do that. Let's have a look. There they all are coming into there. Now, Photoshop is now having a look to align them all. So it's seeing if there's any areas that overlap. Now, just looking at these briefly in Adobe Bridge, I would have said, you know what? No, they don't align. They're just random photographs that I took at the Swan Bell. But um, there is something a little bit unique about these. They do a lineup, but not horizontally or not vertically. They actually line up both vertically and horizontally. So Photoshop will now go ahead, blend them all together. You can see it working away there in the background and start blending them. Wow, that is truly amazing. So not only has Photoshop picked out where all of these go together, it's also created layer masks over here. So you can see doing it the proper way, creating layer masks, joining them all together to make a fantastic panorama. And this is a reasonably high resolution setup now because of how many images were included there. So it's 295 megabytes already. So it's quite a big file and you could place that straight into InDesign and that'd be a really great uh, looking shot. The only other thing is one last thing if and this is a big file if I wanted to do some retouching on this and the retouching tools are for another day but something's on a bit of an angle and it's not quite right. What we can do now is now use the brand new rotate view tool or hit R on the keyboard and then that entire view can rotate around. This is all part of the using the graphics card or the OpenGL rendering. And there we go. We can rotate it around and then we're just rotating the canvas view. We can do our retouching and then reset the view after we're done. So for retouches, that is a real bonus as well. Guys, that's all we've got time for this episode. So thanks again for tuning in to Creative Suite TV. I hope to see you again really soon with some more exciting crea creative tutorials. Catch you around. <laughs>